please note that this video contains spoilers. This is Dean Goldmore, Whitestone Group, movie thoughts. So first I want to talk about that bit near the end of the film in prison. Briefly I want to mention the impact of the image of Gada in a jail cell. That was just, that hit like a brick. That, that was just one of those images in the film. You just, you know, you were not prepared to see that. However, and you know, when, when her father, you know, and, and, yeah, when, when they see each other and the, you know, the girls don't quite understand, they're just happy to see, you know, the, the men that they love, and the men realize they might kill them too, you know, and that is really devastating. However, one big problem with the prison scene is the whole, the Danish, you know, the, the prisoners that weren't trapped by, as, as far as I understand, these are, you know, the, the Danish ward, I think they call it, those people are the regular criminals that weren't trapped, you know, they weren't put in jail by the Nazis. So they're going to, you know, transport a gun over to the resistance forces. How do they get a gun? And just this whole thing, it was just so unnecessary that that whole, you know, false tension kind of thing. I didn't think that they would actually make it out of the jail. And I gotta say, this might come off harsh, but really, when they decided not to go to Sweden, didn't they make that choice? Or at least, you know, at least Marius. You know, he kind of just, you know, no, we're staying here because others might get hurt. You know, and that was a noble choice. But then you can't you know, turn around and say, oh, wait, we can get out of here, sure. I don't know, it just... I don't think it added to the film. In fact, I think it detracted from it. It's one of the few things that did so. I thought that it worked well with how Jacob, Jacob, was the, you know, the reason that things went wrong. He just, he hesitated for that brief little second. And... He didn't, you know, so he didn't take the pill in time, and they were able to, you know, torture the information out of him, and, you know, the, the, these Wilstengruppen had, you know, taken that risk, and now they paid the price. You know, that was really nicely, effectively done, and also the bit where, you know, Gata is told, you know, you, you realize this was Jakob, you know, that was really good, that, and, and it's also just this, you, you believe that he would hesitate like that, because he, he was only human, and he, he probably wasn't ready for what he, and this is not, this is not me passing judgment, this is my honest evaluation, you know, I don't know if it's completely historically accurate what happened there, but I can imagine that there were, you know, imagine. I know that there were plenty of people just like him in, you know, there's probably been people like him in almost any war humanity has ever fought. You know, someone who just doesn't quite, he's not quite ready. He doesn't have those instincts or they're not quite as honed and he's going to be making mistakes. And, you know, you could see it from right away. It, it was very nicely set up. You know, he lands and he's like, ah, yeah, where am I? And, you know, he's forgotten the money, which they almost threw in the, you know, that great line. Well, I guess it's a good thing we checked before we threw it in the, what, what's that word in English? Marsh. You know, and he's like, and, you know, he forgets, you know, he accidentally speaks in English, although only when the... Resistance dude is there, which was a little off, you know. He should have maybe had at least one or two other lines in English. That and that the actor really clearly has 
an accent, you know, when he speaks in it. I don't know. Then again, if he was supposed to be Danish, I guess he would have had an accent when speaking in English. Never mind. The... The bit where the German, where it's German plane instead, you know, and that whole, just the, you know, the, 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 there's a plane approaching, and they, they hear that, and they turn on the lights, and he just keeps talking into it, and just the audience is sitting there, gradually realize, it's a German plane, it's a German plane, you have to get out, and, and suddenly he realizes this as well, and he's, he yells at them, turn off the lights, and then, you know, that one kid gets up and shoots at it, and you you understand why he does it, you know, because it is, you know, he, again, he is only human, you know, and how do you deal with something like that? You know, it just, it's an act of frustration and anxiety, you know, he, he has a gun and He's terrified, and he's been terrified ever since the Germans entered the, you know, our country. So, yeah, and the plane turns back and just shoots. I gotta admit, I was ducking in my seat when, you know, the plane... Again, great use of the perspective, you know, because you feel like you're the one getting shot at. You know, the plane feels really close. And again, we don't see the pilot, and we don't see a close-up of the plane. We just... We see it pass over their heads, you know. I, I love how the film never shows anything... You know, there, there's... Yeah, essentially never shows anything that isn't happening directly to one of these characters. And mostly, when I say these characters, I mean the family. The, you know, the people from the village of Wilstein. The one exception is the brief bit where we see from Ranas and Maia, the bases there, the German bases there, they send troops. And this is still very intricately connected to, you know, the people of Wilstein. So, yeah, you know, you have that the, you know, everything is seen from their perspective. And that works really well. You know, you, like I said in the review, there's an there's a sense of intimacy to it, you know, it's, and you really get into these people's heads about how, you know, what that experience was. I also liked how the placement of the camera, when you see, you know, some of them getting shot by the firing squad, it almost feels like they're shooting directly towards the camera, directly towards the audience, you know, and nice work on the What's it called? Squibs as well. You know, very convincing work. I don't know if there's a lot else. I have mixed feelings about the truck scene where they're, you know, they have to get past the German. What's it called? The, the checkpoint, I guess. I do like that they were unable to find one of the boxes, and then, you know, there's actual consequence to that. The Germans set up this checkpoint, and, you know, what is the reason? Well, we found, a, you know, a box of weapons. So, yeah, makes perfect sense. Obviously, they're gonna have to check. And, yeah, you know, you... You know, you have the you have Jakob in the back with a gun, and then you know the driver gets out a gun and is already there, and they're very nearly exposed. I guess the German who responds to the driver like that at the end of, near the end of that scene is familiar with the driver. That was how I read it. Like they, you know, he drives back and forth often and. You know, I don't know, I guess the German is there, or at least, I don't know. Anyway, they're familiar with each other. Maybe they've, you know, had business. And I guess that's why it's supposed to be like, oh, he trusts him. 
I guess it's acceptable as you know as, as far as it being convincing goes but I do wish I don't know I don't know exactly how the scene should have went but it does feel a little you know it's it's kind of false tension and I don't know the I think it would have been more interesting if it hadn't been a scene with, you know, such a kind of cop-out ending that proved to be the one consequence of the weapon box they couldn't find, you know. I don't know, the, yeah, I do think there should have been some genuine consequence. Also, I would say when the German plane turned back around and shot on the ground, I think one person should have at least been hit. You know, maybe not necessarily the eye, but at least been hit. It just, it does kind of hurt the film. And I know I say this in other reviews of mine of Danish films, but I really do want us, our, you know, our filmmakers to get out of this habit of just in Danish film, way too often there's no consequence to, you know, stuff seems like set up, you know, something is going to happen and then it just, it's resolved. It doesn't actually happen, it's just resolved and, you know, too often in really, you know, not regrettable ways and just in general, it's, it's not followed through on, you know, something... Actions that don't have consequences. I, yeah. I'm not sure there is much else. One thing I really liked is that with the relationships, you could tell that the gender roles were very much in play. You know, that, or in, in effect, I suppose I should say, that the men ruled but they did listen to their wives and girlfriends and you know there there was that kind of back and forth communication and i i would say that also helps make them convincing as genuinely good couples because good couples do have back and forth communication you know you know the girl listens to the guy and the guy listens to the girl if you want to go with a traditional straight couple, you know, whatever. The two parties listen to each other. Necessary. And they really did good with that here. You know, it wasn't like one gender was always right. I also quite like the humor, you know. That bit about, you know... Uh, the best, you know, Danish soccer team ever. Yeah, if you're from Copenhagen. That was really good. Kumhalmasnude. Yeah, I suppose that actually covers it. Yeah, if there's anything else you want my thoughts on, just put it down below. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.